I'd now like to introduce um, our wonderful facilitator, Liz Jones, who's going to give you an update on the Greater Manchester Order People's Network. Good morning, everyone, and it's absolutely wonderful to have so many people here today. Um, it was really great to hear from Elizabeth about her journey in the Older People's Network and how it's helping her feel proud and confident and inspired. That's what the Older People's Network is all about and I want to talk to you today about how we're making sure that the network is working to embrace the concept of being age proud and positive about ageing. Sorry, I've just realised I don't have the clicker, so if you don't mind um, moving the sliding box, that would be brilliant. So we need this to run through everything that we do. I think the most important thing to say at the beginning is that being positive doesn't mean saying that everything is fabulous and brilliant. As we know, there are lots of difficulties associated with ageing and um, with society, facilities and infrastructure not necessarily being set up to work well for people in later years. Over the past few years, through our events, discussions and reports, we've identified lots of issues for older people, whether that's to do with housing, health and social care, <coughs> transport or anything else. We've identified that things um, can be problems on a local level, right across Greater Manchester or nationally. But the question then is what we do with that knowledge. How do we convince people that these things are important <coughs> enough to make changes? How do we work with the people with the power to make these changes? And finally, how do older people take some of that power back into their own hands and make the changes themselves? Um, so, it's not enough for us to point out what the issues are. We need to engage with finding solutions and taking action. I know lots of you have been members of the network um, for some time now, so you'll know that after every, every event that we do like this one, we always publish a report which is based on the ideas and the insights that you've come out with. But we don't just bring the ideas together. In each report, we also make recommendations. And making recommendations is in itself a way of being positive and looking forward. It's recognising that things can be done and it's making some kind of commitment to doing that. Our last event held in May was about participation and about making sure that older people's voices were heard. I think that all of us here today recognise that older people have got a massive amount to contribute in terms of their ideas, their wisdom and their experience. But if people aren't given the opportunity to express these ideas, it stops them feeling valued. And as Elizabeth said, if people don't feel valued, they can't feel proud. Um, so, following the workshop held at our last Manchester event and another on the same theme in Lee, we produced a simple guide to participation. The participation recommendations that we made were purposefully um, kept as general as possible so that they can be applicable in a variety of different circumstances um, and apply to different kinds of participation and consultation. As usual, we've circulated our report as widely as possible across Greater Manchester, and we're also using it to guide our work within the network. We want to make sure that older people here um, get as many opportunities as possible um, to be involved in making positive changes, and that those opportunities um, are offered in a way that makes them meaningful um, and makes them a pleasure for people to participate in. Another way that we're trying to encourage people to listen to older people's voices is through demonstrating the value of the insights that you bring. 
So we've recently developed an insights and recommendations booklet. And this brings together all of the recommendations that we've developed from our various events and reports. You should all have copies in your packs um, that you might want to have a look at now. This booklet is a really good way of us bringing together the great work that you've done as a network. And it's also a way of celebrating and being proud of the insight that older people bring. We hope that you can take our recommendations booklets when you go to other events and meetings and share that important insight that you've developed as a, as a network. The recommendations booklet also works as a kind of manifesto for the Greater Manchester Elder People's Network. We can refer back to it in our working groups and it's a way of us making sure that the work that we get involved with and the things that we look to campaign on are really in line with the collective voice of the network as a whole. It's an evolving document, so every time we have another big event like this one and do a workshop, um, every time we write a report, the new recommendations go in. Yeah. Okay, so the recommendations guide the work and the campaigning that we do as, as a network. So if we look back to our recommendations for campaigning and development, one of these was that we promote positive images of older people and that we challenge negative portrayals and the use of ageist language or stereotyped images. The whole event today is an attempt to put that recommendation into practice. We want to use today to think about how we can best challenge some of that negative language and those ideas and imagery that are so often used to portray older people and ageing in general. Um, some of you I know are already involved in our positive um, imagery project, which, which Helen Morris is, is leading for us. Um, we started that project in May, and we now have a working group made up of interested network members that are working together to design an approach that will engage as many people as possible. The group has now agreed that we're going to hold a Greater Manchester-wide photography competition. And this is going to help us generate some positive images of ageing. We want to offer some alternatives to all those horrible stock photos of wrinkly hands that are used too often to illustrate ageing or older people. When we have our workshop this afternoon, we're actually going to be working together as a, as a network to find the best words that illustrate more positive approaches to ageing and these words that we come up with together are going to be used to help us set the themes for the competition which will launch next, next year. We're also taking the idea of positive campaigning forward in our working groups to put some of our other recommendations into practice. So one of the recommendations from our housing report points to the need for free, independent and impartial advice about housing options across all tenants. The housing group recognised that to make a convincing case for this, we needed to um, demonstrate, I suppose, that the current situation in Greater Manchester is not as, as good as it should be in providing this. So, We've decided to collect some evidence ourselves and we've decided that we're going to do this um, through doing some mystery shopping. So we're going to have volunteer mystery shoppers from amongst our network members and they're going to be looking at what kind of quality of, of advice people get um, if they phone up kind of different people um, in different places across Greater Manchester. Um, 
this is something that older people can really do themselves to make a difference. It's very much in the planning stage at the moment, and we're looking at how we can tie this into other research which is going on across Greater Manchester to make sure that what we do is, is robust enough to have the maximum possible impact. In our transport group, um, we've spent some time focusing on the recommendation around age-friendly training for transport providers. So we had representatives from Levens Hume Inspire who came to talk to us about the age-friendly training that they designed um, for taxi drivers. We were really impressed with this and it seemed to be making a difference. Representatives from Bolton also came to talk to us and they talked about their age-friendly bus guide. So together, a group of older people from Bolton had come up with some age-friendly principles um, to help make bus journeys a pleasure rather than a pain for older people. And they come up with a strategy to circulate this guide um, by printing them on small cards, which they would then distribute to individual drivers themselves. So we thought this was a great example of um, older people taking things um, sort of into their own hands. Um, but the part that we particularly liked about that approach was that it was positive. Um, because on the other side of the guide, they printed a short thank you note to the driver to recognise that, that good um, service that they've received. So we thought this was a brilliant idea and it really fitted with the second part of the recommendation from our transport report that existing good practice needed to be identified and publicised to encourage providers and those individual drivers to prioritise the age-friendly standards. So the working group has decided that we want to take this idea a bit further and start recognising good practice in drivers right across Greater Manchester. We haven't, um, we haven't um, actually done the design for the thank you card yet, but that's the sort of next, next stage of the process for us. Um, and we're hoping that we, we will come up with something that people can hand out to drivers right across Greater Manchester um, to say thank you to them um, and sort of promote that, um, that age-friendly practice. Um, and we're also hoping that as well as um, the bus drivers, we'll also be able to make it a general thing, which we can give out to taxi drivers as well. So it, it's something that, that works right across the board. So these are examples of some of the ways that the Greater Manchester Older People's Network is focusing on what older people can actually do to make a positive difference. Older people have got a massive amount to contribute in terms of their knowledge, their experience and their commitment. And we need to make sure that we're making the most of this and encouraging other organisations and strategy and policy makers across Greater Manchester to do the same. And we need to be proud of this. We need to be blowing our own trumpets as a network and we need to be encouraging our members to do the same. So the last thing I want to talk about is how our individual members are taking more of a leading role. So in July, I went with some of our members to the Aging Better Celebration Conference in Sheffield. And that was actually where we were lucky enough to um, see Joyce speak for the first time. Um, so older people from right across the country came to that event um, from all the different Ageing Better um, projects that Ambition for Ageing is part of. 
and they were there to um, share skills and stories and experiences. The Greater Manchester Old People's Network led a workshop there and this workshop was entirely designed, delivered and um, developed by the members um, of the action group and all of them gave presentations, they led the workshop, they facilitated the table discussions and it really made me feel so proud just to see how far some of the members have come since they joined, that they felt that kind of level of confidence and that pride as well in what they'd achieved that Elizabeth was, was referring to earlier on. You'll notice today that Jan's doing a fantastic job of comparing um, and um, we've got members facilitating the table discussions as well this afternoon and as usual we had a group of network members who planned the event today and um, designed the shape and all the different things that they wanted to include. Um, so I, I'm kind of breaking with tradition a bit by saying thank you this early on, but I'd just like us to just um, recognise the network members now and give them a big round of applause, please. <laughs> so as most of you know, the Greater Manchester Older People's Network is approaching a period of transition. We're currently funded by the Ambition for Ageing programme, um, which is due to um, finish in March 2020. Many of you will already have received our development survey, but if you haven't yet filled it in, there are copies in your pack, um, or you can complete it online. As we plan for our future, we want to make sure that we develop in line with the priorities both of our current members and the wider older population of Greater Manchester. We want to make sure that what we do is always in line with what older people think um, and with their priorities. So it's really important to get as many opinions as possible. I think you've got until the end of the week to complete that. So we're really confident about our future. We've got lots of support across Greater Manchester. We have got some funding already for next year and we're exploring various um, options for future funding. But whatever our exact shape in one year or five years time, we're committed to being a network that is age proud and positive. We want to be a network that its members can be proud of and more than this we want to make sure we're always a network that is proud of you. So thank you very much. Well, thank you.